Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 12.1 to the public. However, for some people it was coming up as iOS 12 if you were on the public beta. But if you're not on the public beta or the developer beta, you got 12.1 and it came in at 516.3 megabytes. Now, if you are getting iOS 12, you can just install it and it actually will install and then reboot and install the current version of iOS 12.1. It's mislabeled when you go to the software update page. So if if you go to your phone and you have the beta on there, just go to settings, then go to general, scroll down to the bottom, go to profile, tap on the profile, remove the profile, put in your password. Once you put in your password, hit remove. And then what you'll need to do is reboot. I will wait for this to reboot here and we'll try this in just a moment and I'll show you what it looks like. Now the phone has rebooted. You want to go to settings. Go to general and then software update. We'll wait for it to check the update and it will probably come back with iOS 12 as far as what it's going to install. It's just, and just like that, it came back, it's iOS 12, but really when it installs, it'll be iOS 12.1. Now I've done that on all of these devices and I wanted to see what it would look like and it's fine once you do that. Now let's take a look at the build number because depending on the device you have, it's slightly different. If you have an iPhone XR, it's different than all of the others. So let's go to settings. Then we'll go to general and about, and you'll see the version numbers are slightly different. 16 B 92 and 16 B 93. It's not a big deal, but it is something to note. Now, as far as these devices are concerned, there's quite a few changes or updates and fixes in the background, but let's cover what's new first. And we'll talk about what's fixed later on. Now, the first thing is group FaceTime. We've been waiting for this since iOS 12, and this is available on iPhone 6s and newer. So if you have a 5s, 6 or 6 plus, you're out of luck, but any of the others, you're good to go. The same is true for the iPad Air 2 and newer and iPad mini 4. All the older ones, it won't work, but you will have group FaceTime audio. So let me show you how that works. So what you want to do is go to FaceTime. Now I'm calling myself on group FaceTime and you'll see that it says add a person. So let me answer it over here. Now I've answered it and you can see we're looking at the camera over here and here. Now I can add a person by going here tapping this button here and tap on add a person. Now I can put in whatever the person's name is. So let's try another one. Now I'm adding another one and it opened up on this phone. Now I'm trying with the same iCloud ID, so it's not working properly, but you'll see if I want to bring these to the forefront, you tap on which one you want on the front and it will bring it up here. So it's pretty simple and straightforward up to 32 people. Now the next thing they've done is add over 70 emoji. This is for Unicode 11. So let's take a look at those and there's over 70 different ones. So there's cold and hot and three heart face and woozy and all sorts of different ones. You've got a superhero, a super villain, red hair, bald, curly hair, gray hair, or white hair, different things such as a Petri dish, DNA. That's probably my favorite there. Fire extinguisher sponge. All of these new ones have been added and some of these have options. So these, any of them that are people, you can change skin colors and tones and all of that sort of thing as well. So those have all been added. Now, one of the things they've added is for the iPhone 10 R 10 S and 10 S max and 10. If you go to the camera, you go to portrait, what you've got now is a depth control while you're using it. So you tap on this little F for F stop. And let me put my hand here and we'll blur out the background. So you can blur it out. Actually, let me spin the camera around so you can see it a little bit better. And the background will blur out if I go up and it will go clear if I go down and you can see it before you're using it. So that's a new feature that they've added as well. And it is a little bit screwy until it takes the photo. Now, of course, relating to the camera, one of the things they've fixed is beauty gate. So if we go back in, we'll take a picture. I'll move to the side here for a moment. So it should no longer smooth my face. And what they've said is that it was picking the wrong frame of the HDR pictures that it was taking the wrong base layer. And it's since fixed that. So it seems to be doing much better as far as that go. Now they've also fixed the LTE issue that plagued not only my 10 S max, but my 10 R and 10 S and some others, those should all be fixed, but they specifically call out the 10 S 10 S max and 10 R. So that should be fixed across to all of these devices. It also fixed issues with voicemails not appearing. 
on some devices and also resolved an issue where those iMessages could be merged into one thread from different users. Now also if you were having issues with the phone app, it should resolve this issue where there were numbers appearing without their corresponding contact name. So some people had messaged me about that. That should be resolved in the phone app as well. Also, it adds the performance management feature in the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and iPhone 10. And what that means is if you go to settings and then you go to battery, you should now have the option for under battery health for this peak performance capability. As the battery ages, it may not be at peak performance. This one's at 99%, but if it's not and it reboots, you can choose performance or you can choose for battery longevity and it slows it down a little bit. That's now in the iPhone 10, 8, and 8 Plus. Now with the older devices, Apple has added the ability for them to tell you whether or not the battery is genuine. And that's in case you need to replace it and you don't replace it with an Apple battery. It will let you know that apparently and tell you if it's genuine or unable to tell you if it's genuine or not. So that's something that's a little bit different. Now also, if you're using group sharing or you're using the sharing where you can share different iCloud storage, there was an issue that could prevent adding or removing a family member from family sharing. And that's under your settings and under iCloud. So you can add family members there. And there was a bug with that. So now you can add family members or remove them and you shouldn't have an issue. VoiceOver in camera, Siri, and Safari. That should be fixed as far as that goes. It should improve it. And it also fixes an issue for those of you distributing applications and things to devices with MDM device enrollment. So it should help with that. There is one more issue I didn't mention, and that has to do with screen time. So if you're in screen time and you manage children, you go to screen time and you have some people to manage, you can now manage those with face ID or touch ID. And it also fixes an issue that prevented screen time from reporting specific website activity in the screen time app. So all of those things should be resolved. Now, as far as battery is concerned on all of these, it's hard to say because, well, it's only been out an hour or two and hopefully it's quite good. It was good on the betas for me. Battery life was quite good on the last beta. In fact, let me show you on the 10 R where I've been using it the most for the review, but let's go to the battery, we'll wait for it to load and battery. You'll see five hours, 13 minutes. I'm at 95%. I have been using this all morning and it was plugged in while I was updating it. This one I updated through iTunes. All of the rest I did over the air. I was trying different things as we had issues, but if I go to the last five days, you'll see I'm getting four hours and 42 minutes and I have a ton of battery life left. So I'm probably going to get six to eight hours of battery life on the iPhone 10 R and that was on beta five. Now, as far as speed goes, I did run a Geekbench test on this. So let's take a look at that. And it came in at 4,796 and 11,336. If we take a look at the history, you'll see here that it's pretty good. It's right about the same. We're not going to see much of a difference and everything is seemingly smooth in the past couple hours. I've been using it on different devices. So scrolling is smooth. That looks good. And different apps open fine and games seem to be working okay as well. There's quite a few updates as well, including one to shortcuts. And I'll have a video on that later on. Now with the iPad, there's not anything specifically new. It works well. All of the apps seem to work okay for me. I've been using the iPad on the betas for a while and I've had no issues whatsoever. So if it was working well before, it should continue to work well, plus have the bug fixes I'm mentioning. So there's not a whole lot more to talk about. That was a lot of little updates. It's basically the fix you want to install. If you've got iOS 12, you want to install this to fix all of those issues because 12.1 is where most of the issues are fixed. We'll probably see a 12.2 beta starting next week or sometime around that. And who knows what features will be in it, but I'll keep you updated. If you'd like to get your hands on the wallpaper, I'll link it in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.